Have you ever found yourself looking up at the night sky, staring at the countless stars sprinkled over the black emptiness of space? As you kept looking, its vastness grew and invaded your mind, making you realize the scale of the expanding universe and how small you are in comparison, filling you with a dreadful emotion that can be hard to describe, as if you inadvertently peeked at something beyond yourself. That is what cosmic horror is about. Beyond the monsters, the violence and the danger, this horror is about the awareness of the limits of your own humanity. Early 20th century writer H.P. Lovecraft wrote extensively on the subject, which is why the genre is also referred to as Lovecraftian horror. His stories often dealt with characters coming face to face with something beyond their understanding. As much as Lovecraft's works have inspired well-known writers such as Stephen King or Neil Gaiman or even Junji Ito's mangas, his brand of horror has not often been successfully adapted to a visual medium. Unlike slasher movies, possession horror, sci-fi horror, or monster movies, cosmic horror isn't as prevalent on the screen. So why is that? Why is cosmic horror harder to make? Can you describe its form? No. Let's take a look at an excerpt from H.P. Lovecraft's The Unnameable that clearly shows one of the biggest issues of adapting cosmic horror to the visual medium. Good God, Manton, but what was it? Those scars, was it like that? And I was too dazed to exult when he whispered back a thing I had half expected. No, it wasn't that way at all. It was everywhere. A gelatin, a slime, yet it had shapes. A thousand shapes of horror beyond all memory. There were eyes, and the blemish. It was the pit, the maelstrom, the ultimate abomination. Carter. It was the unnameable. As you were hearing the description of the unnameable entity, you must have gone through a certain amount of mental gymnastics to try and form a clear picture of it in your head. The writer starts by explaining its recognizable forms, but then it shifts beyond comprehension until it becomes less tangible and finally transforms into a concept. So how do you represent an unknowable or unnameable horror visually? It's hard to think or imagine something greater and bigger than yourself, let alone represent it for all to see. If you give it a shape and put it on screen, it's not unknowable anymore and therefore you take away its power. A movie that maneuvers around the visual aspect is The Bird Box. In it, we know that there are monsters so frightening that they cause people to go mad and commit suicide, and at the same time, they are attractive to people that are already mad. At no point in the movie are we shown what the creatures look like. We only see what they cause. The biggest hints we get are the drawings made by mental patients. They are vague yet ominous and do not take away from the mystery. Omitting the entity altogether because of its visual complexity is a good route, but we can also find a good example of the opposite being done. The Thing is a movie that does a great job at showing us the creature and yet by the end we still don't know what the true form is, only its transitional phases as it makes itself look like people or animals. The visual effects, which were all practical and groundbreaking at the time, show us nightmarish and misshapen horrors that often lack the safety of an anthropomorphic figure. The creature constantly changes, we can't define it. We are presented with an entity that we can't understand, or whose goals we can't comprehend, even as it tries to look and sound like one of us. The thing succeeds in representing cosmic horror, not because of the use of tentacles, a calling card of the genre but because it honors the changing characteristics of the literary style. Just like the description of the unnameable, it can't be pinned down to one thing. It's several. Cosmic horror resides deeply in the abstract. If you recall the excerpt from earlier, the unnameable being's descriptions are deliberately elusive. The only anchor in the sea of the intangible is what the descriptions evoke in the characters or in us. The reaction of being faced with the incomprehensible leads the character to look inwards to make sense of the complex puzzle of emotions they are left with. The most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. The sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little. But someday the piecing together of dissociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality, and of our frightful position therein. 
that we shall either go mad from the revelation or flee from the deadly light into the peace and safety of a new dark age. Imagine trying to portray the emotions in the previous passage on the film. Existential dread is an emotion that is difficult to explain. It's a feeling that we rarely experience in comparison to happiness, fear, or anger. On top of its rarity, not everyone can verbalize it or express it in a way that others can understand it. It is often misunderstood or interpreted as something else. Therein lies the hard task of representing those emotions on film and making the audience share those feelings as well. The emotions born of cosmic horror are similar to the genre's monsters. Abstract, not fully formed, hard to harness, hard to describe. It's difficult to show the introspection of a character coming to terms with the fragility of their own humanity. This type of inner monologue is usually best explored in literature. But an intimate inwards realization can be done without having the character say anything. Like in the scene in Annihilation, where the main character is face to face with a being that is emulating her. She slowly begins to understand it without the use of dialogue. Sometimes the best thing to do is to let the visuals speak for themselves. If showing a monster can handicap your movie, so can explaining it. So it was alien. It's like assigning a shape to something that doesn't have any. It's all about balance. Some movies might get the visuals right, but they lack a cohesive or poignant story and are missing a sense of foreboding or dread. In other cases, the setting is perfect, the mood is just right, but the effects are laughable and far from frightening. If you want to explore cosmic horror but don't have a big budget, the Bird Box's example is one to replicate. Don't show the creatures and let people's imaginations do the work. If you're lucky enough to have a bigger budget and have a lot of creativity, practical effects like those in The Thing or The Void can do the trick. Just don't forget the second and equally important half of the equation when creating the story. Good cosmic horror balances the external aesthetic of a sci-fi movie, but with the internal feel of an existential film. People are so hung up with the aesthetics, the tentacles and the monster, that they fail to explore the bigger questions. Because that's even more complex. They themselves don't understand it. Not enough movies go into the abstract of the themes. They stay at the surface level with the visuals. And it's completely understandable. What is the limit of our humanity? What happens when we go beyond it? If something is hard to think about, then it's hard to verbalize. And if it's hard to verbalize, then it's near impossible to show. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. We invite you to like, share and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Until next time.